Hello and welcome to another video. Now, almost a year and a half ago, I did a video called Zeppelini or Zeppelins. Now, these uh, are effectively a fried trip of Lithuanian cuisine. They are a large um, stuffed potato dumpling. Uh, um, uh, and over the last year and a half, I've learned a lot more about making these. So I figured I would come back and I would offer another video involving all of the major tips that I've learned in the last year and a half. So if you haven't watched my earlier video, please do so first. If you have, then welcome to this video. We're going to be talking a lot about um, some enhancements you can make to the dough, um, some options you can have with the sauce, and um, basically <clears throat> some different um, options for the filling, although we won't really go into that too much today. Now, if you go through and you look at recipes in Lithuanian as a language, you will find um, different kinds of filling. You'll find fillings that are cheese. You will find fillings that are, for example, chicken liver. And you'll find some fillings that are sometimes vegetables, in particular, maybe mushrooms. These are all great options, um, but I will leave this to you to do research on at this point. Um, otherwise, maybe at some point I will try another one with a different kind of filling. Today, though, we're going to up the filling by using fresh marjoram. Um, last time I used dried marjoram or dried basil, you can choose which one you want, um, but fresh marjoram is a really special herb and it comes through much better than the dried herb ever will. So in the event where you can, definitely use the fresh herb. And one thing I've noticed about Lithuanian cuisine is that it tends to use uh, fresh herbs to uh, a fairly large extent, so go there. Um, we're also going to talk a bit about vitamin C management in the dough. And in particular, I've moved away from adding lemon juice to the dough itself to adding a small amount of lemon juice to the cooking water as well as um, grated onion to the dough itself. Onion also contains vitamin C, as we talked about in the Kugelis video, but um, it releases the vitamin C slowly. And so unlike the lemon juice, which as soon as you, you know, squeeze out the dough, the lemon juice is all gone and so is the, um, so, so is the vitamin C. With the onion pulp, you'll actually continue to get something of a release of vitamin C for a much longer period. And this is going to keep your zeppelins much lighter um, and prettier longer. Finally, in the early stages, I served these minimalistically with fried onions, fried bacon, and uh, sour cream. Today we're going to do a proper <clears throat> bacon, onion, mushroom sauce. And you could use cream or sour cream for the mushroom sauce, but I figure with the bacon it's a little bit too rich, so I'm using a milk-based sauce. Milk is used in some sauces in these regards in some of the recipes that I've seen. So we're going to go ahead and do that also. So for ingredients we have, for the filling, uh, ground pork, about 250 grams. This is going to be way more than we'll use for this amount of zeppelins, but we'll talk a little bit about what you can do with the leftovers. Um, half an onion, half a very small onion, so it's like 50 grams maybe, or maybe a little less. Um, fresh marjoram, and uh, salt and pepper, that's it. For the dough, we have the other half the onion. This will be our vitamin C source. We have about a kilogram, that's about 2.2 pounds of starchy potatoes. We have uh, 100 grams or so of a waxy potato. Um, and the other half the onion, and that's it for the dough. I will add a little bit of, of starch to the dough this time to show you that. That's an optional ingredient and it changes the texture. Um, for the sauce, we'll use onions, um, I have some bacon um, thawing, and uh, then we have mushrooms. That'll form the basic aspects. I'll also use a little cooking oil, salt, pepper, more fresh marjoram, milk, and some starch to thicken it. 
<clears throat> so I have uh, finally chopped the top half of the onion. The reason why the top half will become evident um, shortly, and into this I am going to sprinkle as much marjoram as I want. In this case, I think I put in about a tablespoon and a half of fresh marjoram. Um, and to this, I'm going to add about 250 grams of um, pork. Um, salt it well. And season with pepper. <clears throat> I think that marjoram is one of those herbs that just kind of comes across so much better fresh than dried that um, it's pretty much always worth uh, going with the fresh. So then from here I'm going to mix this well with a fork and uh, I'll be back. Now before I go any further I'm just going to take the uh, the waxy potatoes and if they're a little big after I peel them I will slice them into big chunks. We're going to go ahead and start boiling this while we start taking care of the sauce. I'm also going to move the um, uh, the filling into a different container because I'm going to use this container for holding the um, potato pulp as I get started on the um, uh, on the uh, dough. So for the starting point of the sauce, um, I'm going to start with um, mushrooms, a bit of oil, bacon, and uh, again, I'm going to take another whole small onion. I'm going to use maybe half of these mushrooms. Uh, remember, in a lot of these dishes, we're going to cook them way down. So we're going to go ahead and start by taking the mushrooms and uh, slicing them up. And we're going to start sauteing them in oil uh, so, that they, uh, so that they cook way, way down. So slice these out, put them in. And once they start to really cook down, then we'll add the other ingredients. So the um, <clears throat> mushrooms are cooking and we will stir these and let them cook down quite a lot. I finally chopped another small onion and I have a good handful of bacon pieces over here. Um, <clears throat> as the onions, uh, sorry, as the mushrooms cook down, then I'll add the um, onion and the bacon together, let them cook really well, and uh, then we finish the sauce later. So while this is cooking, I'm gonna start on the potato dough this is where things uh, get complicated and where I think I have some of the most um, important uh, tips to give. I'd also say that if you check out my other video on uh, Lithuanian mushroom sauce, that also goes really well with this dish. While the sauce is starting, um, I'm going to peel these potatoes and, and just uh, keep them under uh, some cold water while I'm waiting. Um, I'm also going to be using the rest of this onion in the dough itself. I'm going to do this instead of using lemon juice like I did last time. The reason is that onions contain a fair bit of vitamin C, and if you add lemon juice, what happens is the vitamin C in the lemon juice, when we wring the water out, uh, goes away. But if we put it in, in an onion pulp, it'll continue to get released, even though there's a lot less vitamin C together. Um, it'll provide an anti-browning effect for a lot longer. So I'm going to peel these, put them under cold water, and we'll be right back to start the grating process. So you can see here that the mushrooms are cooking down very nicely. So I'm going to turn this uh, down to low, and I'm going to let them just very, 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 very slowly cook and cook down even more. Um, and I'm going to wait to add these um, other items and the marjoram and milk and starch until the zeppelins are in the water. <clears throat> Once again, as a reminder, we're going to use the fine grating side of the box grater. This is the fine star grating side. If you use the coarse side, you'll get something that's a lot harder to chew and a lot more fibrous. But if we use the fine side, um, the potatoes will turn into the consistency of applesauce. And the same thing will happen with the onion. Now this may be a little hard on your eyes at first, but we're going to grate, grate the onion first. And then we will grate the, uh, the potato onto the onion. And if it becomes too hard, then you can uh, stop grating the onion for a bit and come back and add more later. But this isn't too bad right now, so let's go ahead and 
see how much we can do. Of course, if you're using an electric grater, you just throw the onion in. Um, but I you chose the bottom half for this because with uh, the root holding it together, it's easier to manage. If you use the top half here, then um, your problem is everything um, everything kind of falls apart and it's really, really, really hard to keep this going. So yeah, I'm just gonna go ahead and finish grating this and then we will add, then we'll start grating the potatoes in. Um, yeah, so this is, this is actually not too bad. At least today, I seem to be lucky now. It's a little tough, but not too bad. There we go. There's our onion. And this will provide the vitamin C. So here we have our pulp. Um, again, I'm going to squeeze it in a cloth bag, uh, putting the liquid back in here. And uh, we'll go from there. Uh, as soon as I'm done, we'll go ahead and finish up this um, dough, and then we'll go ahead and uh, finish up the zeppelins. So one other note here is I've usually found that trying to keep the bag inverted helps. The major reason for that is that this avoids um, potato pulp getting caught in the seams. Now. As soon as I get done with this, of course, the bag goes in the laundry and the laundry gets started. Reason being, although I've said before that nothing smells worse than rotting potato pulp, I have never smelled rotting potato pulp mixed with rotting onion pulp. Uh, that probably, that sounds to me like it could definitely be worse. So, um, you've been warned. Um, I'm going to go ahead and squeeze this. We're going to get pretty much all the liquid out. And it's at this point that, that the onion really starts to shine in comparison with the uh, lemon juice. Now it's worth noting <clears throat> that when I learned how to make zeppelins, I started with zeppelins and then I went to Kugelis and then finally to um, Bovine Blinne, the potato pancakes. Um, this is probably the wrong way to do it. Um, I would recommend starting with the potato pancakes first and then going to Kugelis and then going to uh, Zeppelin. The reason is that you learn a lot of things in the other dishes which um, helps a lot with uh, this dish um, and going the other way is kind of like starting with calculus and working your way back to algebra. Um, so this is has a reputation of being a difficult dish. Um, it is a difficult dish, but you can learn a lot of, of proper things beforehand. All right, this is rung. So we're going to go ahead, put the pulp in here. and get ready to mix with the uh, riced potato that will rice in a moment. Now, if you don't have really starchy potatoes, you can just simply add starch at this point. But the starch will dry out the um, dough even further. So in those cases, you're probably going to find that you end up having to um, use wet hands to add a little bit of moisture back in over over time. You're going to see how, again, it's, it was it was evident last time, but you, you can see how um, how little potato pulp we actually get out of these potatoes. So here we have this, and we're going to go from there. We'll be right back. I'm going to uh, throw this in the laundry and get the laundry started. Now, there's not a lot that I need to talk about this part. You know, again, just we mix these together. Um, if you do like a chewer your result, um, and I'm just going to show you what happens when you do, you can add a little bit more starch. And when you do this, the dough is going to get drier. So just uh, keep an eye on that. But more starch means chewier uh, dough here. 
Um, and then I will pour off the liquid here and reserve the starch. And now I have a fairly sticky dough, which is fine. Um, but this is the Zeppelin dough. And it should uh, weather the cooking process and even uh, waiting to eat a little bit better without darkening as much than if I had just used um, lemon juice. Now before we go into uh, the next part, uh, I recommend, I very strongly recommend um, dusting the um, plate with starch. Um, and also at this point, I have gone ahead and added the onions and bacon to the sauce, but I'm going to let that just kind of uh, cook slowly. So now have a ball of this. I'm going to take a smaller amount of the filling. And what I like to do is I like to kind of squeeze the filling into an oblong ball. So if we get it into an oblong ball like this, then it's a little easier to form the rest of the dumpling around it. And then <clears throat> what I like to do is start with a sort of a, just by pancaking this, um, put this in and then form the Zeppelin around the filling. And if your dough is too firm, it's going to be a little difficult to clean uh, to close. Simple solution is get your hand a little wet and um, then toss it in between your hands back and forth until it's nicely sealed. And these do need to be sealed. Okay, so we have one. And I will do the same. We'll end up with about four, and then we'll go ahead and get ready to uh, cook them. I will dust them with starch also. This helps provide a nicer shape and feel at the end. So <clears throat> you can see I'm just kind of slowly cooking uh, the bacon and the onions together with the mushrooms at this point. Um, I will probably turn this up quite a bit once the zeppelins go in. Um, in the meantime, I've started the water. The water, I will, to the water, I will um, dust the top of the water with some starch. This protects the zeppelins while they're cooking. And uh, we'll be back once the water is boiling. Um, I'll add the zeppelins and uh, we'll go ahead and finish the sauce. <clears throat> so the water is nearing a boil, but the, uh, the, but the uh, onions are starting to stick to the bottom of the frying pan. So now is probably a good time to start adding milk. I probably don't have enough milk here, so I'll probably have to add more. Um, but I'm going to start with this much and basically just kind of deglaze everything. I've already seasoned this with uh, salt and pepper. Uh, I did that shortly after I added the um, onions and the bacon. Uh, so then we're just going to kind of let this uh, stew a little bit. And maybe I'll add some more milk, or maybe I won't. We'll see how that goes. Now that I've added the milk, I'm going to add just a bit of my marjoram. I will add more marjoram later when I'm ready to thicken the sauce. Um, but this is going to just kind of, it'll, the two times I add it will add different notes. So, um, ooh, that's smelling nice. <clears throat> Finally, I'm going to add just a tiny, tiny squeeze of lemon juice to give that last little bit of vitamin C to um, prevent these from oxidizing while they cook. So this is just starting to boil. We're just about to add our zeppelins. And yeah, I think we're good to add them. Again, we cook them until they have been floating for five minutes. And then they're good to go. 
And I'm putting them in gently like this so that they don't bump together, stick together, or stick to the bottom. And here we go. <clears throat> I'll be back when these are uh, when these are floating and have been for five minutes. In the meantime, let's focus on our sauce. All right, it's boiling again, so let's go ahead and um, mix up the starch and water. And I'm using less than a tablespoon of starch for this much. Um, and then basically pour it in, stir it well, because we want the starch to spread out. And then watch it as it boils. If it thickens up too much, then we have to add more milk. But this is looking like a nice consistency. So I think this will be fine. Now that we've added the starch, it's time to add uh, the rest of our herbs. And this is looking, yep. And stir this well. And then um, I'm going to turn the heat way down so that the sauce is warm but not hot. So you can see the zeppelins are now floating, so in five minutes we're ready. Now, after removing the zeppelins from the water, I like to let them rest for 40, 50 seconds, maybe a minute or two. Um, and the reason is that when you pull them out of the water, sometimes they can be really soft, um, especially if um, there's a little more starch in the dough. But if you let them sit, they'll firm up a little bit. Um, it also means that there's less water on top, so when we add sauce or other things, um, they don't um, they don't just kind of um, fall off. So they'll get stickier, they'll get firmer. So, um, I think we're now ready, so I'm now going to take a little bit of this wonderful sauce and <clears throat> you can either put it on the side or you can put it over the top. I'm going to put, um, I'm going to start by putting some on the side. Yeah, I'm just going to put it on the side. And then basically as you eat it, you can dip um, the Zeppelin in the sauce. So let's go ahead and, and, and put some up here. And then I will go ahead and do the taste test. Um, of course, you can garnish with maybe a little bit of the chopped fresh herbs that you used other earlier. And uh, here you go. Of course, if this were a full plate, I would then put salad and some other things on the other side. And now for the taste test. We'll start with just a piece of the potato here. That's really nice. It's um, softer, more chewy, um, not as hard. The added, the ad, this is the way I like it, um, which is with just a little extra starch. If you don't put that extra starch in, it'll just be a little bit um, crunchier almost. So now I'm going to try a little bit with the sauce. Mmm. The fresh marjoram there is just really 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 delicious i'm trying a bit of the meat with the sauce that's really 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 good i was kind of worried that i put too much salt in the sauce but this is actually really good this is a hundred times better than the zeppelins i made last time now, if you find this uh, content interesting and useful, I hope I've earned a subscription from you. And you can click the little bell to make sure that you get notifications on all my new videos. Um, also, if you like this particular video, please like it. I look at likes and views when deciding what kind of content to make more of. Um, at any rate, hope you have a wonderful week. Bon appetit and see you next week.